Do calories matter when you are trying to reintroduce animal foods into your diet? Let's get into it. Before we do, I'm Samir and I'm an ex-vegan health and nutrition coach. Getting the post-vegetarian or vegan diet right is not easy. If you'd like to talk about it, the link to book a free consultation is below. Okay, so calories. The short answer to all of this is that calories matter far less than we've been led to believe. And if you just ignore the concept of calories, you'll probably do much better, okay? Um, Now, the first thing to say is that the nomenclature is wrong. We're not really eating calories. Calories are a measure of how much energy it takes to heat one gram of water one degree centigrade, okay? That's a calorie. You don't eat energy. You don't, you know, try eating fire. It's not going to end very well. Um, So the language is a bit ridiculous. So why talk about calories at all? Well, people who like to talk about calories like to point out that different macronutrients have different calories per gram, right? So again, how much heat you get by burning protein is different than how much you get from heating uh, fat, right? So protein and carbs, when you put them in a laboratory, they have about four calories per gram. So again, they'll heat, when you burn it, it'll heat a a gram of water four degrees. This is at sea level. Um, And if you do it for fat, you'll get about nine calories. So fat technically has double double the calories, if you want to think about it that way, it's not super helpful um, because none of this has anything to do with the process of digestion or even how much energy a given organism, especially the human organism, can derive from these substances, right? So to give one obvious and illustrative example, I mean, one could eat pure wood chips, right? They have fiber. Um, Fiber is a carbohydrate. Carbohydrates have, as I said, four calories per gram. So just eat, you know, 100 grams of wood chips per day. You think you'd be living off that? No, of course not. If you try and eat only wood chips or even only broccoli, um, that's a different story though, you'll have serious problems, including the lack of the ability to make any energy and you'll die, right? So the question is not how much potential energy does something have when you burn it. Um, human digestion, digestion is not a Bunsen burner. It's much more complicated than that. The more relevant question is what happens when you put different macronutrients into a human body. And here I'd like to talk about one meta-analysis of the relevant randomized controlled trials. This paper looked at 267 studies um, and excluded most of them through various exclusion criteria. That's how these meta-analyses tend to work. Um, 17 studies ended up in the final um, meta-review. Five of those were follow-up studies, so we're really looking at 12 different cohorts of people. Um, As always, there are the usual caveats. One of these used a food frequency questionnaire. Um, Food frequency questionnaires are pretty awful. But the other um, 12, or the other 11, Um, used different methodologies that are certainly better than FFQ. So they used multiple day food diaries um, and that kind of um, multi-day food recall, et cetera. Um, People could have been lying about their food diaries, I guess, but certainly this is a higher quality assessment than most of the data out there. So with all of these caveats in mind, what the study found was surprising. The calories people consumed were not, I repeat, not correlated with weight gain or weight loss. Protein was to some extent, meaning the more protein the person ate, the more weight they lost, as you can see. But the other two macronutrients were more predictive of weight. So the more carbohydrates a person ate, irrespective of calories, the more likely they were to gain weight. And the more fat they eat, again, irrespective of calories, the more likely they were to lose weight. So eating the food that is the most concentrated in calories is the most calorated with, correlated with weight loss, right? So let me just repeat that. The food that is the most calorie dense which is fat, the macronutrient, which is the most calorie dense, is the most correlated with weight loss in this study. So getting back to the question, if you're reintroducing or introducing meat into your diet, should you be worrying about uh, about calories? Well, based on this data, no. Thinking about calories or counting calories is probably unlikely to help you one way or the other. Uh, In other words, I don't think it's going to hurt, but I don't think it's necessarily going to help. If you want to increase your weight, and many of my clients are trying to increase their weight after years of basically vegan malnutrition, Trying to find a diet that's higher in carbohydrates or that includes more carbohydrates might be a good idea, especially in the short term. For really quick weight gain, we probably want a diet that's both high in fat and higher in carbs, if the person can tolerate it. The problem I see is that that's often too much for a person's digestion, and we have to either dial back the fat or the carbs, right? Um, And for weight loss, you probably want to lean into the fats a bit more and do some form of carb restriction. Um, Is there ever a situation where we do want to count calories? Based on this data, the answer is no. You know, I've had some clients who really, you know, they like using these calorie tracking apps and so on. And I'm not going to stop anyone from doing what they like, but I really haven't seen it have any benefits at all. Um, And again, that shouldn't surprise us because calories have to do with heat, energy, and water. They have nothing to do with chemical processes in the body. So with that, I'm Samir. I'm a health and nutrition coach. I'll see you next time.